Welcome to this remote control quick tip. In this quick tip we're going to talk about the new FPV race band. Well, relatively new. For those of you that have been flying FPV for a while, you'll be familiar that there are typically four bands, A, B, E and F, but in the receiver that we installed in the Dominator V3 Fat Shark goggles that we reviewed last month, the one that we popped in there had something called race band on it as well that we could select. So what we're going to do in this video is explain for those subscribers who asked what race band is and how it works. The first thing we need to do is to refresh our memory on what the traditional FPV bands look like. So here they are on the right hand side, typically called bands A, B, E and F. Sometimes on uh, some equipment you'll hear that it's called A, B, C and D and occasionally you'll see band E called C and band F called D. But they're split into these four groups and each of these groups has eight channels and any 32 channel capable FPV equipment should be able to transmit and receive on any single one of those channels up or down the spectrum. Fat Shark traditionally tend to use band F and things like Boscam tend to fight be on band E but that isn't necessarily the case. So you'll find that different manufacturers will use different bands and different frequencies. One of the interesting things here is that a lot of people used to think that if I had a band F transmitter and receiver because I was using some Fat Shark or Immersion RC technology and my friend came to the field and had a Boscam transmitter and receiver that we'd never have a problem where his signal would interfere with mine or vice versa. But if we order these channels sequentially so that the lowest frequency is at the top and the highest frequency at the bottom what you can very quickly see is the way it works is that band E is kind of split between the top and bottom and then bands A, B and F are kind of sliced in the middle of this sandwich. So even if my friend and I were flying on completely different systems, potentially we could have a problem. So as FPV racing has started to become more and more of a pastime, the challenge has been how do you manage the frequencies so that you can get the best possible use out of the available frequency bands that we have for FPV, but also separate them widely enough so that we don't bump into each other, so that you could have up to potentially eight racers running at once. Because without any way of managing that, what you've got to try and do is get everyone either with a 32 channel transmitter and receiver and trying to pick bands and channels equally through this list that we can see or we have the new race channel. So let me insert the race frequencies into this table. So again this table is just looking at the lowest frequency we have from FPV right to the top. So let's add race in. So that's what it looks like. So you can see that the eight race bands are spread equidistantly through the available frequencies that we have. They're actually spaced by about 37 megahertz apart. That should be just enough to avoid bumping into each other. So if I'm on race channel one and my friend is running on race channel two, we should be able to manage to do that without actually seeing each other's FPV signal affecting our reception. So now what it means that rather than going and have to worry about different bands and who's using what, if everyone's using the new race band, then all you need to do is make sure that each racer is using one of the eight bands available. And that means that we have the maximum possible usage out of the FPV spectrum and each single signal shouldn't be stepping on anybody else's. So every FPV racer should be getting a nice clear view out of their craft. Interestingly, there is only one overlap between these frequencies for the race band and the more traditional A, B, E and F frequencies. Although some of them are very, very close indeed, and you might be able to pick them up by picking up or tuning your 32 channel receiver to the nearest one, there is one that's the same. And race band seven towards the bottom is actually the same frequency, 5.88 gigahertz as the F band eighth channel. So now if you're going to look at FPV racing, it's absolutely worthwhile looking, investing in a race capable receiver. That way, when you get to the event and you're signing in, then the frequency management is a lot easier for everybody and everybody can have a fun time flying.
Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless 360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.